Hey guys, it's Mike. Um, today I'm going to start my review series on originals and, and uh, remakes. I'm not going to be looking at sequels and I'm not going to be looking at reboots, but actual remakes. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the 1979 When a Stranger Calls. This movie starred Carol Kane, Charles Dunning, Colleen Dewhurst, Tony Beckley, and several other like side characters, detectives, and parents, and, and husbands, and that sort. But really, um, those were the four main people in this movie. Like I said, it was released in 1979, and it was directed by Fred Walton, who went on to do April Fool's Day, among other things, mainly TV. Uh, TV movies. He directed Miami Vice. Um, he did the TV horror movie uh, When a Stranger Calls Back. Um, so yeah, he, he's he's done some stuff. All right, this movie is very unique in that it is three definite acts. Okay, so a lot of times movies just seem to flow. Um, this one flows, but there is there is uh, three definite divisions because you meet different characters in each set. So in the first one, you have Carol Kane, who plays Jill, the babysitter. She's at this stately uh, house owned by a doctor, and she's babysitting for the two kids, or their two kids, while they go out to eat. Um, her, her facial expression really kind of sets the mood. To me, this particular movie was very much character-driven. Um, so you have the, the battle of the babysitter versus the creepy caller um, in the first act. In the second act, you don't have the babysitters gone. You have a detective who is played by Charles Durning. Um, you have the killer who is played by Tony Beckley. And you have his new stalking victim, played by Colleen Dewhurst. And then in the third act, we're back to Jill. She's married now with kids of her own. The detective and the killer. So three very um, distinct acts with distinct characters, uh, character building, and some interesting twists and turns along the way. So... That is kind of a breakdown of how this movie was made. In 2006, they released... Uh, this is a three-pack, but it does have Stranger Calls. Um, they released the remake of When a Stranger Calls. And really, this movie is not so much about characters. Um, it, there's one main character in this whole movie, and that's uh, Camilla Bell who plays um, Jill Johnson, the babysitter. Uh, then you have some little side characters, but the characters, the side characters really are not a big part of this movie. They're, they're in the movie very briefly. Um, this is more about her and the house. This house is a very modern house. It's, it's on the lake. It's way out in the boonies. Um, it's all glass. There's, you know, exterior glass. There's interior glass. It's got a glass, um, um, where do they grow plants? Uh, not a hot house, not hot house, but, um, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they actually have one, a greenhouse, yeah, but it's all glass. It's got a pond in it. It's got bridges in it. It's, yeah, it's, it's quite a house. It's huge. Um, and you see a lot of the house in this one compared to the other one. Also, in this one, you don't know who the killer is ever. Um, I will give you a, a little bit of um, scoop on this one. The killer is actually played by two different guys, and one of those guys is our guy Lance Henriksen. He actually plays the killer in part of this movie, which part I don't know, because you really never see the dude. Uh, you never see his face, so it's hard to tell who is who. All right, so this one, like I said, not not the division of acts. It's pretty much the girl um, has to pay off her cell phone bill, 
And so she takes this babysitting job because she's mad at her boyfriend and her friends and she doesn't want to go to the big bonfire that night and she has to earn some money to pay off her, her bill. So she goes off to pay off her bill. All right, so that is a basic recap of the two movies. This one. Um, it's very much a, uh, character, like I said, character-driven. You have um, Carol Kane who is facially just amazing with, you know, you feel the fear, you feel the, the, the intense uh, concern with, the, with the, how she's feeling about these phone calls. At first she thinks, oh, it's a joke. They're just goofing with me. You know, typical back in that, that day they would make crank calls. So she didn't think too much of it at first. But then it kept happening. And they grew increasingly threatening in tone. So she calls the cops. Now, back in the day, we didn't have cell phones, so she had to keep this guy on the landline phone long enough for the cops to trace where the calls are coming from because they're like, you know, we can't do anything really about it. There's, you know, they're not physically threatened. They can't get to you. You're safe in the house, so don't worry about it, but we will try to figure out where they're coming from. And it turns out, that they are coming from inside the house. Now, this wasn't exactly new because Black Christmas did that before. But this particular occasion sent chills through all babysitters' spines, including mine because I used to babysit. The thought of somebody being in the house with you and the kids that you are babysitting, seriously, just probably the most intense opening to a movie ever. Um, so, of course, the cops call her, and they say, the calls are coming from inside the house. you got to get out of the house. And she runs to the door. She's unlocking the door, and she sees up above her in the hallway, up above the steps, a door opening, and you see the um, shadow, the whatever, of a man. And that's it. Part two, we have um, Charles Durning. The, the detective. We have Colleen Dewhurst as the uh, as a woman named Tracy, and then we have uh, Tony uh, Beckley as Duncan, the killer. Now, the guy actually killed the two kids. We find that out in the second act. He actually tore them apart with his hands. So he gets sent off to um, a mental institution, but after seven years, he escapes. So the doctor of those two, the father, which the doctor that Jill was babysitting for, hires the um, detective to find him and get him. So he does that. So they're in a city, um, and this Duncan guy is homeless because, you know, he has no job, he has no nothing. So he goes, Duncan goes into a bar, and that's where he sees Tracy sitting at the bar, and she's got this deep voice, and she's very, you know, very, um, I don't know, I guess sexy, I don't know. Um, but, she, you know, she, he kind of gleans onto her, and he just pesters her to the point where she said, hey, man, just leave me alone. And other people in the bar hear her yell that, and... Um, this one guy starts a fight and just beats the baloney out of Duncan. Well, Tracy feels bad and she leaves the bar. And you see her walking down the, these desert, this deserted, dark street of a major city. And it's really very creepy and eerie because you just have that feeling that someone's watching her. And some, you know, even, she, you know, the, her, Tracy, knows that some, somebody's got eyes on her. But she just keeps walking. She gets home to her apartment building. She gets in the building, she's up at her apartment, and all of a sudden, Duncan is there. And it really freaks her out at first, but then she, she, you know, she feels bad because he got beat up because of something she did. Um, which, really, she shouldn't have felt that way, but she did. So she's nice to him, and she finally gets him to leave. So later that next day, um, the detective shows up and tells Tracy, Hey, this guy's dangerous. He did this to these kids. I'm trying to find him. Will you help me? And so they work together to help find him. Um, but there's all kinds of like intense and weird things that go on before uh, 
the final act of part two, and that is where he is actually hiding in Tracy's closet. And she comes home, and she's, you know, doing stuff that you do when you get home. And um, all of a sudden, he jumps out of this closet. And that scares her, you know, because up to this point, she's been nice to him, but it just scared her to death, and she starts screaming. So um, the detective is in the hallway, and he comes running in, and Duncan runs out. Okay, so that's the it for the end of uh, part two of this movie. Part three is Jill is now married. The babysitter is now married and has two kids of her own. And she and her husband are out to eat. She gets a phone call at the restaurant. So she goes up to the desk where the restaurant is. And old uh, Duncan says the same line to her that hit the last call that he made to her when she was at that house when he killed the kids. Have you checked on the children lately? Well, she loses it. She calls her babysitter. Her babysitter said, no, everything's fine. The kids are fine. And then the line goes dead. So she's like, oh, my God. So she takes off. Uh, the cops and her, and her and her husband arrive at the house. Same time. Kids are fine. Babysitter's fine. Everything's fine. Cops leave. Babysitter leaves. All's good. Uh, so she gets up in the middle of the night to get a drink of something in the kitchen. She's down there. She's hearing weird noises. She gets a really weird feeling that maybe somebody's there watching her. So she runs upstairs and gets in bed with her husband, but it's not her husband. It's Duncan, and he goes after her, and he wants to kill her. Uh, but the detective, um, Charles Durning's character, runs in and kills, shoots him dead. So, satisfying ending. Okay, so that is this movie. The OG. All right, so this one. Like I said, basically, this is about the house, and and it's about um, just the one main character. Yes, there are other brief appearances by other characters. Um, Jill's parents are in this at the beginning. Her friend uh, Tiffany and her boyfriend are in this at the beginning. Um, and then she goes off to babysitting the kids, and you meet those parents for about two minutes. And then there's allegedly a maid somewhere in the house, our housekeeper, that you never see uh, alive. And then you actually get to see the kids towards, um, I would say towards the end of this movie. But pretty much it's all about her trying to figure out this big funky house with the, all of its, you know, uh, modern amenities where you use a remote to turn stuff on and off and open and close and whatever. And also the beautiful greenhouse that they have right in the middle of the house. Personally, I'd have a pool if I could afford something in the middle of the house, but whatever. Um, so this one is, once again, she starts getting phone calls. Um, and, at, you know, so a couple times it's her friends, and then it's, you know, somebody saying, you know, weird stuff to her, and she's thinking, okay, my friends are pranking me because I didn't go. Um, one of her friends, Tiffany, shows up at the house kind of at a, an antsy time where she's hearing things and she can't find the housekeeper and um, she, you know she's walking around this big old honking house and she checks the kids and uh, you know so Tiffany shows up um, and they have a little spat because they aren't getting along so Tiffany leaves and then it's just her so she um, she keeps getting the call she calls the cops and the cops are like well you know we'll see what we can do we'll try to Try to figure out where these phone calls are, uh, you know, coming from. And sure enough, eventually the stalker shows himself. Um, and she freaks out. She goes and gets the kids. The kids are already hiding because apparently he popped in there already. Um, so then the rest of the movie is pretty much about her hiding in the different areas of the house and finding her friend dead and finding the housemaid um, housekeeper dead. Uh, there's a big scuffle. She ends up s getting the kids out of the house and stabbing the um, intruder with a knife through his, I guess it's his hand, I can't remember. Um, and that's how it ends. It ends with him being in a car because the cops do come to the house as this is all going on and eventually catch him but he's in the car, 
and he stares at her as they're as they're driving him away. And it basically ends with her having, uh, you know, in hospital having hallucinations about he's in the house, he's in the house. So different, yes. So acting. This one gets an A. I loved every character in this. There was plenty of character development, and the movie was very much character driven. Uh, even though the killer was one of the main characters, which was kind of cool, because normally, if it's not a Jason or a Freddy or a Michael, we really don't know a lot of times why they're doing what they're doing or who they are even. Um, so at least we figured out that this guy was a nutball, and we actually get to know the little nutball, um, which was kind of good. That second act was was great. I, I love the Tracy character. I love the detective. Uh, some of the other side characters were, were interesting. The other detectives... Um, seeing how they were trying to to um, follow where the phone calls were coming with all those old time machines at the phone company where you had to follow the different lines as they opened yeah that was that was cool um, so yeah interesting definitely an A this eh, it was just pretty much her she was pretty wooden um, she was okay. Uh, not, I don't know, it, as, as it went along, she got better, uh, the angst seemed to come through a little bit more, but for the most part, it was just her, uh, you didn't find out, you still never had a clue as to who the killer was, so there was no acting there, the kids were kids, um, her, you know, like I said, the other characters were only in it for a couple minutes, so, not the greatest acting. Body count, two kids and the killer, body count, a friend, and housekeeper, that's it. Um, so not a lot of killings in any of these, just basically a lot of, um, what's the word I'm going for? Tension? Yeah. Yeah. So overall, I would give this one an A, and this definitely is a, a, a great watch. I don't know that you would completely consider this a horror movie. It's more of a thriller with horror elements. This one, on the other hand, is pretty much set out to be a horror movie um, with some thriller elements to it. So this one, eh, it's, it's all right. I'm going to keep it um, because, well, first of all, it's part of three packs. No, I'm not going to get rid of it um, because I also don't own a copy of Vacancy. But yeah, it, it's all right. Pretty good. So yeah, this is definitely the superior of the one, but this one is not a bad, bad remake. Uh, I'm glad they tried to do a little bit something different. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed this one best. All right, guys, that is it. Hope you all enjoy it. Thanks. Bye.